So, hello everybody. Uh, good evening. Welcome to lecture 20 of physics 870 quantum computation. Uh, I think uh, this is probably going to be one of our last uh, fully online classes and probably from tomorrow onwards from our next lecture I'll be we'll return back to the classroom uh, but I will still continue holding the classes uh, like in hybrid mode just because that makes life so much easier for me uh, but of course I'll be there in the classroom that's <laughs> you know uh, that I can't make life that easy also so uh, in the last lecture we talked about um, we were talking about complexity and in the in this process of talking about complexity uh, i believe it was Whipple, if i'm not mistaken who uh, mentioned uh, what happens if you consider error correction or if you introduce the possibility of errors in the uh, in the circuit so when you when you introduce errors Right, the, the required number of required complexity of your of your circuit will increase. Right, and now the thing is that uh, the uh, this this concept of error correction is not something which is uh, which is optional or which is something which is. Uh, you know, accidental or 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 uh, you know, side character. It is something that is central to to quantum computation. Uh, the reason is the following. So, in 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 classical computer in classical computers also, you have errors and you have error correction codes, right? Okay? Uh, but the in classical computation, the nature of the errors does not generally determine the form in which your classical data is stored and transmitted. Okay, so the the error correction part doesn't really affect the design of your uh, of your of your of your classical bit i mean it of course it, you have to choose the right materials and so on and so forth if you have materials which are very prone to thermal disturbances and so on you will get large errors you don't want that but in quantum computation what happens is the requirement that we don't want errors to be present or errors to be as less as possible leads us so so in, in there are there are two pictures one is analogous to the classical picture which is that you have some quantum system there are errors in the quantum system and you enlarge the circuit uh, that you have uh, to correct those errors uh, another but but there's a no, second way of thinking, which is that you design your quantum, your, your qubits in such a way, right, at the hardware level, at the physical level, in terms of what are known as decoherence free subspaces. And when you do that, you automatically get what is known as fault tolerant quantum computation. So fault tolerant computation Fault tolerance means that your system is resilient to errors, right? And it requires much less in the way of overhead in terms of manual error correction, like in terms of enlarging the circuit. The design of the circuit itself makes it resilient with respect to, to error. So in this sense, uh, in, in quantum computation, error error correction plays a more, much more fundamental and central role than it does in classical computation. Right now, 
there are errors in any 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 computation right so and you have all experienced those errors uh because you know many times you well these days of course it is not so uh, prevalent but in the earlier days of the internet one would the one would download a file and very often you know you try to open it and it would end up you would get a message that is corrupt or you try to copy a file uh, typically to the old types of media floppy disk which you all probably have no idea what a what a floppy disk is uh, it it was a square about biscuit shaped uh tablet sort of with the thickness of, of like a you know biscuit and it could hold if i'm not mistaken a floppy disk could hold a, a massive amount of something like 5 5 megabytes of data or something like that so for instance in uh, when windows 95 came out back in the mid 90s i think uh, it came with uh, a set of 32 floppy disks and you had to insert each one of those floppy disks individually into your floppy disk drive one by one by one anyway so so the point is that so over time of course systems have become much more efficient uh and resilient to errors so right because floppy disks were based on magnetic storage uh but then you had optical disk drives so optical disk drives the optical uh disk drive is much more resilient to corruption uh you can have a dvd and it can have scratches and so on and so forth but uh it can you know you can still read the data and then uh now of course we have our solid state solid state drives which are you know even better but the thing is that that regardless of how good a medium you use right to encode your data you will always have errors right this is the nature of the world it's also i mean something that we know from like something like the uncertainty principle so one needs to find a way to convey information between two parties in such a way that if party b receives your information they can perform a check on it and if it passes that check then party b can be confident that there no errors have occurred okay so now what type of what type of errors can one have in a quantum system there are broadly speaking two kinds one is called a bit flip error and the other is called a phase flip error okay so what is a what is a bit flip error well as as the word suggests it is an error in which one qubit the state of any one qubit flips the phase flip error is one where the phase the relative phase in any superposition of two qubits flips right because you know that uh if you have a quantum state uh, for a single qubit we can write it as cosine uh theta by 2 0 e to the i phi sin theta by 2 1 right and then some uh global phase which can be ignored so this is the phase right this is the relative phase between between the two cube between the two states of the qubit right so how do we uh, we can actually understand these two uh, types of errors in terms of the block sphere picture 
So let me um, get a nice figure of the block sphere. Okay, well, I guess I'll then do this. So we can understand these, these these two errors in the in the using the block sphere, right? As follows, and uh, So first let's talk about the bit flip error. Okay. So let's say that you have a state of a sum system such that the initial state is the up state or the zero state, right? And now you imagine that there are some fluctuations present due to the in interactions with the environment, which cause your uh, your the state of your qubit to move on the block sphere right in in this direction right so this is uh, this this would represent a rotation around the uh, in, in a direction orthogonal to the z axis, right? And so, su such a such an evolution would represent a this this would lead to a bit flip error. Right? Because you're going from your state being in the zero state to something that could end up being in the one state. In exactly the same way, a phase flip error can be thought of in terms of the block sphere picture as a rotation around the z-axis, right? Because as you rotate around the z-axis, what, what happens? You start with the plus state, right? Which is the positive X axis. And you move towards the minus state, which is the negative X axis. So this is a, this is a bit flip, right? And this second one is a, is a phase error. And so a phase error can be thought of as a bit flip in the uh, in this in this plus minus basis. Okay. Now, so we can consider um, and and uh, what is what causes these errors? So the general uh, phenomenon uh, that causes quantum computers uh, to stop being quantum is the phenomenon of decoherence. So what what is what is decoherence? Decoherence means basically that you you have some pure quantum state. Okay, and it interacts with the environment and due to its interactions with the environment, it ends up, okay, so why is my, not updating, one second, you can just see my problem.
So you start with some pure quantum state and due to interactions with the environment, you end up with a state which is what we call a mixed with a mixed with a mix you end up in a mixed quantum state now these concepts of pure and mixed quantum state i haven't i haven't explained this to you for this you require uh, the notion of density matrices so we'll we'll talk about that if uh, time permits at a, in a later class but the basic idea is that a pure quantum state right is something which has quantum correlations and a mixed state is like a classical state the quantum correlations have disappeared so a pure quantum state has entanglement between different parts and a mixed quantum state does not now and and so this process of decoherence acts uh, can be reduced into individual errors which consists of bit flip and phase flip errors so so those will be the sort of elementary errors that will occur now whether you are in classical doing classical computation or quantum computation one of the simplest ways to correct an error is called a repetition code so what is the repetition code it's the following the idea is that you have your physical you can have either c bits or q bits okay so they can either be c bits or meaning classical bits or quantum bits and what you do is you define your logical bits and what is the the logical bit so a logical bit zero consists of three physical bits which are in the zero state and a logical one c bit consists of three physical c bits in the one state right hmm. and for the quantum case you would similarly define a logical qubit in this way right so what what are, what are you doing you are encoding a single logical c or q bit in three physical c or q bit right so what how is this going to be resistant to errors well what we have done is we have introduced a, a redundancy right so in what how will this work so as an example let's consider that in whatever your your circuit is that there is a certain probability of a bit flip right and the probability of a single bit flip is p right now uh what is the probability of no flip that would be 1 minus p right and we can also make the further assumption assume that uh, bit flip errors on different uh, physical bits or qubits uh are 
uncorrelated okay so now this is not necessarily true in a real system but uh, the analysis of errors which are correlated uh, becomes much more complicated so we'll 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 work with this for the time being right so if you start with a physical bit or a physical qubit in the zero state then what is the probability that it will not be affected is 1 minus p right and similarly the probability is 1 minus p and there's a probability p that it will be flipped right now we can ask this is the probability that a single one of your physical bits will be flipped what is the probability that two of the uh, bits will be flipped right so that means you have two bits and among others and both of these bits are flipped so what is the probability it's going to be right well the the probability is as follows uh so again and we are going to talk about uh the case that the that we have we have a total of three uh physical qubits or c bits so what is the probability that two of these will be flipped right so what are the possibilities the possibilities of a flip is uh can give us these three possible states right these are the three three possible possibilities that can happen so if you want to compute uh, the the error probability we know that the error probability for a single flip is p right so if i have only two bits and i say that one is uh not flipped and the other is flipped what is the probability of this process probability is going to be uh 1 minus p for the first bit and p for the second bit right this is the probability of this transition similarly the probability of this transition is again is well it's p times 1 minus p right so it's the same okay and if you have three bits right and you want to ask what is the probability uh, that two or more of the bits were flipped so so first of all what is the probability that none of the bits were flipped it's going to be what is it going to be can somebody tell me what is the probability of this how do you calculate probabilities so let me give you a very quick reminder on the whole cube ha huh? 1 minus p the whole cube okay so everybody knows this i guess maybe i don't need to give you a 1 minus p whole cube right so what about uh well 
so what we are talk what we are concerned with is these three possibilities for each one of these possibilities we have p square times 1 minus p probability right p square because two of the qubits are flipped and 1 minus p because one is unflipped and there are three such outcomes so the total probability of the process is 3 times p square 1 minus p okay and then what is the probability that all three of the qubits are flipped it's going to be p cubed right so if you have this uh, logical bit or logical qubit the probability that two or more are flipped is going to be what two or more means is going to be this outcome and this outcome right so the two outcome the probabilities will add this will be the probability that two or more of the uh, bits are flipped right so this is equal to 3p square minus 2p cubed and what is this this is the probability of error in the circuit right this is the error probability now if you do not perform the encoding right without encoding what is the probability of the of the error probability of error is just p right for a single single bit okay so now if p of e is less than p then this implies that encoding is a good idea right encoding is good sir so is not available sorry Is updated today. Sorry, what is that, Shantanu? Actually, sir, screen was not updating, but now it just updated. Okay, so no question then. No, sir, no, sir. Okay. Right. Obviously, if the uh, if it's the other way around, then your encoding is not useful. So we can ask when when this happens, and so for that we can look at the threshold. the threshold will be given by the condition that uh, p is equal to p so that means 2p square minus 3p cube is equal to p and the solution that you will get is p is equal to 1/2 so you can you can check that this is the case right this is easy to solve i think so this implies that if p is less than 1/2 or less than or equal to 1/2 then pe will be less than or equal to p okay obviously if you have a situation where p is greater than 1/2 uh, well then you should go back and uh, redesign your computer from scratch right so this is this is what is called a a repetition code okay and now the question now the issue is uh, that why can we not uh, just uh, implement this in the case of a of a quantum system uh, in a very straightforward manner okay so how would you represent how would you go about doing this quantum mechanically so what is the what would be the quantum repetition code so you have a, you have some state psi right and you want to apply this repetition code to it what would be the idea the idea would be that you make a logical bit or a logical state which is made up of the tensor product of three copies of your original state right but the problem is 
the following that in quantum mechanics we have this no cloning theorem which tells us that we cannot make an exact copy of an unknown or an arbitrary quantum state okay so uh this is this is one problem that uh, it is forbidden to create such copies uh, the second issue is the following that even if cloning was possible right how would you determine that there has been an error even if you can clone how would you determine errors right in the classical case what you would do is you would just you would just uh read the state of each physical qubit or, or each physical bit right so for instance you can determine that your physical bit is in this state 0 10 which tells you that your logical bit uh that the correction would be 0 0 0 right assuming that uh, only single qubit errors are allowed and similarly if you have this is your this is your uh, state of your three classical bit then again assuming that only single flip errors are allowed your error correction code will say that okay your intended message was 111 right but the problem with with uh, doing this quantum mechanically is that if you perform a measurement right in the quantum case if i perform a measurement what will i do that will collapse the state of my system right measurement will collapse the state right it will collapse the state to either 0 or 1 for whichever whichever qubit i perform a measurement in right so this will prevent me from uh knowing what was the original state to begin with right so if i perform a measurement of this state what do i have to if i want to see that there have been uh, errors what do i have to do i have to measure this qubit i have to measure this qubit and i have to measure this qubit but if i measure these three qubits my my system collapses into uh this could the first one could collapse to zero let's say the second could, could collapse to one like third one to zero and i would be left with no information about the original state i would be left with some information but not enough to allow me to correct any error right i would not be able to determine whether my original state was this or was it something that was slightly perturbed okay the second thing is the following so the first problem is measurement uh, sorry no cloning this is the first problem the second problem is measurement and in the quantum case the third problem is that errors are continuous for a quantum state okay what does this mean right this means the following uh, that for example if you consider a phase a phase error right you start with this is your initial state okay so going back to the block sphere representation or yeah 
so this is your initial state the plus state now your error can cause your state to be any point along this line your phase error right so your phase error would take you from this state to a state which is e to the i phi right where phi is is a real number between uh what is it zero and uh zero and and two pi actually maybe better to write minus pi to pi right so this means that there is a there are an infinite number of possibilities for the errors right then infinite number of possible errors okay so these are the three problems in classical computation you don't have this issue why because classical errors are discrete right you say that either your bit was in zero and it goes to the one or your bit was in one and goes to zero these are the only two possibilities you don't have anything in between in quantum mechanics you have superposition superposition depend on a continuous parameter right so this is a bit of a what do you call it uh, somewhat of a contradiction like an uh, an uh, i irony that the classical case gives you a discrete error while the quantum case gives you a continuous error and this uh, second criterion by the way can be stated as following that measurement uh destroys quantum correlation or quantum information okay sir yeah sir here the phi is uncorrelated here the phi is what sorry uncorrelated well no here the well i mean there is no no so in this case there is no you are only we are only talking about a single qubit right when we talk about correlation we would generally consider the case of more than one qubit and then we we say that there is a correlation between one qubit and the second qubit so okay. this is not an example of 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 correlation this is just an example of a of a phase error Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so what happened was that for these reasons, it was generally considered that quantum computation is never going to work out in the early 1990s, because people thought that these obstacles, these these three issues, cannot be overcome, and so if they cannot be overcome, you cannot correct quantum errors. but then uh, what happened is that peter shore gave the first algorithm for error correction and he showed that you can have a circuit in which all three of these obstacles can be overcome okay and so what is the what is the basic idea behind behind shor's oil algorithm right uh it's the following it's it's an it's an uh, it's basically the idea of the repetition code okay so i already sort of gave you this this hint earlier that we
okay there was was there an interruption i couldn't tell sir your voice was gone okay so so we have a single qubit we have the state of a single qubit right we want to encode this into a three qubit state in some way okay so what is the idea the idea is the following that this state can be written in terms of the logical qubit in this way okay so this is our uh, logical zero and logical one okay now what sort of circuit is required to take you from to take your state and to encode it into into the state of 3 qubit so we can act, we can write down a circuit for this okay and it's going to be a 3 qubit circuit obviously because we are taking the state of 1 qubit right and we are encoding it in the state of 3 qubits now of those 3 qubits one of them is the original one and so you need two other qubits which we can call ancillary qubits okay and this is what the circuit looks like so there is one c not between the original state original qubit and the first ancillary qubit and there is a second c not between uh, the original state and the second ancillary qubit okay and what one can show so what is the original state of the system the original state of the system is psi tensor 0 tensor 0 okay the final state of your system is going to be tilde psi which is alpha 0 0 plus beta 1 1 okay and we can actually work this out it's it's not too difficult to work it out because let's say the original state of your qubit was alpha 0 plus beta 1 this is the this is the qubit that you want to encode okay then what is the state of your system to begin with let's just write that down and now i'll drop the tensor product sign okay so i can write this as alpha 0 0 0 plus beta 1 0 all right now in the first step we apply a c not operation right between the first and second is your control qubit this is your control and then your second one is the target right so what does the c not do the c not says that if control is in the zero state then the target is unchanged right and if the control is in the one state then your target is flipped okay so now if you look at these two components what will happen to this state under c not nothing sorry nothing will happen nothing will happen right because the control qubit is zero the other state the other component of the state is 100 what happens under the c not operation it becomes beta 1 1 1 1 0 right 
so you started with the original uh, state was psi zero zero okay and now after one c not operation you have ended up in the following state you have ended up with alpha zero 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 plus beta one one zero right now we apply another c not operation but now the c not operation is uh, between the first qubit and the third qubit so now this is your control qubit and this is your target qubit the third one so once again under this c not operation your first component will be unchanged right and the second component will become 111 right so i'll write this as c not uh, 1,2 as c not 2,3 sorry 1,3 1 is the control qubit and 3 is the target qubit so you start out with this state alpha 0 Plus beta one zero zero, and after applying this circuit, what happens? We end up with the with this state, right? So we have encoded our our physical qubit in a in a logical qubit, okay? So there are some term there are some uh, there is some terminology that is used okay which is that um, uh, you have your physical hilbert space right so and then you have your uh logical hilbert space so in this case your physical hilbert space is what it's just the space of a single qubit and what is your logical hilbert space it's the space of your of three qubits but this space is 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 larger than this than the this state right because this space has how many it has eight basis states 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 and so on so you have a code subspace okay your code subspace so i'll call this hp hl and hc your code subspace is a subset of the logical hilbert space right so a logical hilbert space is spanned by a set of eight states but your code subspace is spanned by only two of those states so it's a subspace of your logical hilbert space okay so i'll i'll stop here for today uh, then in the next in our tomorrow's lecture uh, we will see how we can uh, detect and how we can correct errors uh in the original state without destroying the original state so this is the main point right our error correction process should not cause the collapse of my of my state psi so that means i should make some measurements on the state on this state in such a way that those measurements allow me to determine whether there is an error and allow me to correct that error and so that i end up with the corrected state psi so we will we'll, we'll talk about uh, those issues in tomorrow's class and uh, that is called the well it called the error detection and or the syndrome diagnosis and then the recovery procedure okay
all right so i'll stop here for now and also please keep in mind that all of this 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 uh, this error correction scheme that we are talking about in terms of redundancy and so on and so forth uh, this is not uh, the uh, what i had mentioned at the beginning at the very beginning when i said that quantum mechanics uh, allows for the possibility of certain uh, qubits logical qubits which are inherently immune to errors uh so these kind of qubits are not are not of that sort this error correction is not of that sort these are not decoherence free subspaces okay this 000111 space that concept maybe we'll talk about it if time permits if there is some interest okay so you all can please uh, start uh, working through uh, the lab 8 of the qi state textbook which is the error correction uh, error correction lab okay because i will expect you to submit that as a homework assignment in 7 to 10 days from today all right Okay, uh, that's it for today. We meet again tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye sir.